What's good YouTube, it's Adam from iMyMusic Music Mobile. Welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm gonna to go ahead and answer some of your Logic Pro for iPad questions. There's a bunch that were asked on my previous video and I don't think I got to them all and sometimes it's better just to talk about it rather than to type it back and reply in the comments section. So let's go to that video and answer all of your Logic Pro for iPad questions. If you're seeing some white spots on my wall, that is because it got damaged a little bit, it got nicked up and I had to repair it. So painting is gonna happen soon, so just disregard those white splooshes that you see on the wall behind me. All right, so let's see how many comments we can bang out here. Dylan Reiner says, I hope they add flex pitch. It would be insane to be able to comp and tune vocals on the iPad. So right now we don't have flex pitch. We only have flex time. Hopefully in a future update, flex pitch does come into play, but I think that's a little bit trickier to add. So that may be down the line quite a bit. Dance Carl asks, can you import video movie to be able to track visuals for voiceover and other sound or film? If so, does it have its own window or do you have to pull up a side view like the files app? So as of right now, you can't import any video files to score to film. I would imagine it's quite complicated to score to a visual with slide over on because you're not going to get the timing perfect. It needs to be within the app itself. So right now, no scoring to film is possible in Logic. We can only work with audio at the moment. Ranger Rice asks, how is the performance buffering, etc., and what iPad model do you use it on? So to answer your second question first, I am using the iPad Pro M2. As far as performance goes and buffering, this thing is a monster. It's as good as any M2 device that you'd find from Apple. This thing's crazy. It's fast. I never really have to wait. I've maybe crashed Logic Pro for iPad. I wanna say once, maybe twice. But I wasn't doing anything crazy, it just crashed and that's it. But uh, I opened up the app again and I was able to load that file thanks to the autosave. Isaac Lazit 8646 asks, I'm looking to upgrade from my iPad 6 Gen to an iPad Pro M1. Any info on how much storage Logic will use, including plugins, unsure of which capacity to go for. All right, so my opinion, Logic Pro for iPad will run perfectly on the M1 chip no issues with lagging or anything like that so don't worry about that as far as storage goes that's really depending on you how much are you going to be recording straight on the ipad do you want to have a lot of samples on the ipad ssd it's really up to you but to answer your question about logic and how much storage this plugins take so if i go check out what the app is actually using logic pro right now is using 13 and a half gigs now this is with all of the sound packs installed and i definitely recommend install all the content available for Logic Pro. I'm using right now about 13 and a half, but you probably want to have more than that, obviously. So I would say at minimum, if you're just using Logic, you're not installing other apps or anything like that, to go for at least the base model at 120 gigs. Can't go wrong with that. You still have a lot of space if you're only using your iPad for Logic Pro samples and everything. But if you're gonna be installing a lot of apps and movies and things like that, definitely get more storage if the budget allows it. Jeffrey Smith 4618 asks, do you recommend the larger iPad screen for using Logic Pro? So for me, the more real estate, the better. So yes, I do recommend the bigger screen for using apps like Logic Pro. The more real estate you have, the better. I've also used iPad, sorry, Logic Pro for iPad on a big monitor, so a 27 inch monitor. I plugged that in using Stage Manager and it worked great. Everything was nice and big and scaled. So more real estate, the better. The next question we got here is, can we use the step sequencer for pitch instruments like keyboards, for example? The answer is yes. All you gotta do instead of creating a MIDI track is create a pattern track and you can go ahead and create your pitch stuff using the step sequencer from there. Despair Quietly Please asks, Hi, anyone know where the sampler device in Logic Pro iOS, like the one in GarageBand, where you record your voice, then play it up and down the keyboard immediately? So right now, that is a downfall of Quick Sampler. It actually doesn't have the record option like you have on the desktop Logic Pro. Now, there is a workaround for that. Let me show you how to do it. So as of right now, in Logic's Quick Sampler, if I bring that up right here and make this bigger, there is no option for recording. It's just not there at the moment. I hope that gets added in a future update. So to get around that, what you gotta do is create a new audio track. And then you're gonna wanna go to hit record here. Then you're gonna wanna record in your sample. So let's go ahead and record that in right now. So there's just a snap. Then what you wanna do is click and hold that region, drag that into this gray area right here and you can import it using either Sample Alchemy, Quick Sampler, or Drum Machine Designer. Let's use Quick Sampler. 
And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and bring up the plugin, double click that, bring it up, and then find where you wanna cut out any of your audio. And then finally, you can play your sample on a keyboard. Now it would be a lot easier if Apple just included the record option within Quick Sampler to record straight into it. Not here yet, hopefully that comes in a future update. Next question we got over here, I'm calling myself out on this, but do they have the feature where you can select a key in the piano roll and use the brush tool to place the notes in the corresponding key? The answer to this is yes and no, it could be a lot better, but let me show you what I mean. So if I go ahead and just bring this up here in Logic, I'm gonna go create a, Let's create a MIDI region over here. And if I hit E on my keyboard, that'll bring up the editor. Now I could go in and just brush in notes just like this. And then we can lock it to a certain scale. And then once those notes are in place, you can go ahead and hit the I on the bottom left right here. Go to your scale quantize section and select any key you like. So look at the selected notes right here. I'm gonna to go to F melodic minor and it's going to change where those notes can be played depending on the scale that you chose here. Now this can be done but the problem is when you're brushing in your notes, yes it's letting you brush in the notes but you're actually not locking it to the scale as you brush it in. You have to go back and scale quantize again and then move the notes. I wish it was more like the desktop version of Logic where you can't actually place the note on a note that's not within the scale that you chose. You basically have to draw in your notes and then scale quantize from there. So not the greatest iteration of it. Hope it gets better, but uh, this is what we got for now. Crossfading, fade handles on clips and clip gain missing for audio is a massive loss to this app. So yes, we do have fades on your audio region as we would on any DAW, but we don't have cross fades between two audio regions. And yes, that is, Sort of a letdown, but I'm thinking that can be added very easily in a future update. Next question we got here is, can you connect the iPad to an interface and record drums, guitars, vocals directly to the iPad? The answer to that is yes, you can. You have a couple options you can go about it. One, you can go ahead and record in whatever you wanna record using the internal microphones on the iPad. They're pretty good. I use them to sample stuff around me. So it works, but if you really wanna get that pro quality stuff, you gotta connect in an audio interface and you can do that. Right now for my iPad Pro, I use this right over here, the Evo 4. Wherever I go, it's just small, compact, and it sounds really good. And just, I could connect any instrument or microphone I want to this thing. And that's how I record into Logic on my iPad using this. I mean, if you already have an audio interface, most likely you can connect it to it as well. So you don't have to go buy something new. But the answer is definitely yes, you can record anything you want into Logic. This bridge has cables as kind of disappointed. It has no external support. Also would like to see this connected to a secondary monitor. So yes, it does have external support. You can use your iPad in Stage Manager on a bigger screen. So everything just becomes bigger. What you can't do is use like different windows on separate monitors like you can on the desktop version. So you can't have like your mixer on one window and your range window on another. Everything has to be in one. But if you do connect it to an external monitor, everything is bigger. And if you do have an M series chip iPad, everything is gonna be stretched out and you won't have the two bars on the side like some of the older generation iPads when you connect it to an external display. The next question we got here is how about loading projects from your desktop on the iPad and their reverse? I assume this is impossible. It is possible you can go back and forth between Logic for Mac and Logic for iPad very easily. Of course, if you don't have some of the plugins you use on your desktop version, it won't load up in your iPad, but it will still open up. The session will still open up. The only downside here is that we, I gotta make note, if you save your desktop sessions as a folder and not as a package, they will not open up on the iPad. It has to be saved as a package. One master fader says, I wish it had the scoring editor. It's not full Logic Pro without the scoring editor. I agree, this does not have a scoring editor. It would be nice just to draw in your notes with the Apple Pencil. We don't have that feature now. Once again, hopefully that does come in a future update. I'm thinking that is definitely a thing that Apple is thinking about. DesConnor7445 asks how to import my own WAV files into Logic Pro on iPad. So I did post a video on how to import your own samples to Logic Pro for iPad last week. I'll place a link to that video down in the description box below this video. Also included as a card in the top right. So if you do wanna watch that, it's there. So AUV3 is not compatible. What a huge drawback. I really hope they're going to make this available. So we can actually use third-party plugins in Logic Pro for iPad. 
All you gotta do is open up the App Store, search for AUV3, and you can find a whole list of plugins that you can load using the AUV3 file format. And it's really easy to install. All you gotta do is just install it like any regular app, and then you can go ahead and pull that up in Logic Pro. So for instance, I got one third-party plugin installed here, and I'll show you how to load it in. You just go to Audio Effects, you're gonna scroll down to the bottom where it says Audio Units. I got a baby audio plugin installed, Magic Switch, it's a free one and a goodie. And there it is right there. And that's how third party plugins look in Logic. The only thing I should mention is if you do have a plugin on your desktop that you paid for and you wanna load it onto your iPad and it's available in the App Store, you will have to buy that app again. Right now they're not connected. I'm not sure if the developers can link the two of them, but for now, just know you do have to buy it again if you have it on your desktop version and you want it on your iPad. Just something to think about. Next search we got here is can you import your own key commands? The answer is no, you can't. You can't customize key commands, you can't import key commands, and the key commands that are available right now is very lackluster. The only key commands you have are these right here. So if you hold down the command key on your keyboard, that's it, this is all you got. You can't customize it and you just gotta use what you have. Hopefully the ability to customize or add will come in a future update. I think a lot of users are using iPad Pro for Logic in keyboard mode, even though the iPad is a touch first device and maybe I'm just an old school person. I like to use a keyboard and mouse. You know, there are many producers out there that are obviously only using an iPad or iPhone to make music and it's all touch based. So for them, this is like a huge upgrade and it's amazing. It's incredible. It is a good app, but for me, for someone who likes to use a keyboard and mouse and use shortcuts, definitely something that needs to get added for those users out there. Even though the focus for this is a touch first DAW, that's just my two cents. Andy Foster 2656 asks, is it free with Logic? No, this is not included if you have the desktop version. There is a free trial for one month, so definitely try it out, see if you like it. There is a one month free trial. You can get that in the App Store, but Logic Pro for iPad is subscription based, so it is $4.99 a month, or I believe $49 for the entire year. So just something to think about, but try the free trial, it's one month to see if you like it. At least he got that. MJC Music asks, how do you export? So it's fairly easy to export your sessions. Just hit your project name in the top left-hand corner and go to export. You will be presented with a couple of different options here. You can export your entire project, uncompressed or compressed, or you can export all tracks as audio files if you wanna separate them out as stems. So I hope that answers some of your questions about Logic Pro for iPad. If you do have any more, go ahead and ask in the comments below this video. Definitely happy to continue the conversation down there. I've been using Logic Pro for iPad for the past week and a half now, maybe two weeks, and I've enjoyed the experience. Yes, there is some drawbacks to it. Yes, the process is a lot slower than I am on the desktop version, but it is new, so that is comes with the territory, I guess. Uh, definitely a fun dog. There's definitely a lot to dive into, and I will have more videos talking about everything that I learned along the way about Logic Pro for iPad. But until then, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. Later. Peace.